What we have here is a maxi crane printer. This is the first of its kind on the North American soil. We just brought it in a couple weeks ago for the World of Concrete show. We're excited about this because what we would like to do is see printers replace Portland cement with a different ink. So if you look over here, what we have there is a sample of geopolymer, uh, which is an alternative to Portland cement. It's made, it has a different chemistry, right? It's not a limestone-based hydrated product. It's a polymerized silicate, which means that it ends up a bit like granite. So you've got something that's now five times as strong, something that's waterproof, fireproof, acid-proof, something that lasts thousands and thousands of years. We built the first ever geopolymer 3D printed home just a couple months, an hour and a half a year in the, in the Las Vegas de desert. Um, we are hoping to, to scale this out, these geopolymers, um, as an alternative uh, that will help re reduce uh, carbon emissions by 80% uh, or more. Uh, as you may know, uh, over 8% of all global carbon emissions are due to uh, cement production. Um, or, yeah, we're talking about uh, billions of tons of carbon dioxide released because in the production of Portland cement. Uh, we're talking about trillions of liters of water, fresh water, that needs to be used for Portland cement. We're talking about uh, billions of tons of Portland cement that uh, goes to waste after 1,500 years as rubble. It needs to be uh, put into landfills. We're finding a solution to each one of those things, right? Geopolymers uses 80% less uh, carbon. Uh, it doesn't require any fresh water. In fact, we can use salt water and recycle salt water in the washing the machine, but otherwise you're not mixing in with water. Uh, and, uh, and then lastly, we can take Portland rubble and actually mix it into our geopolymer. It, it is active, is reactive with, with geopolymer. And so we can build with a waste product. We've been doing it with fly ash, with slag, um, and so other other waste products uh, can be incorporated as active aggregates. So, any questions? Very cool. Yeah. So right now, what's the primary use case? Obviously, you're developing the product, and are you starting small, like housing projects? What's the scalability up to like commercial construction and stuff like that? Right. So, uh, let me say this just to step back. So geopolymers have been around before Portland. Right? Mm -hmm. So geopolymer formulations are, can be found in, in Roman architecture, in the, in the pyramids, uh, in the Easter Island heads, right? Those are geopolymers, right? These long polymer chains, they, they figured out how to use them well before Portland was invented. Portland was invented, it looked really cheap, it looked great. No one really cared that it's not gonna last that long or that, uh, you know, that it has the, the, the climate effects that it does. Okay, so what we're doing now, it's a comeback more than anything. Mm -hmm. It's not new, it's a comeback. Um, it's much bigger already in, in Europe. Uh, in the US, uh, we are at the, the ready, like this, this, the starting blocks of this. So as a company, um, we're hoping to scale up quickly. Right now we've got one house that we've constructed. Uh, we've got a couple projects, like we're taking telephone wires uh, out of the air, PG&E telephone wires, putting them onto the ground, encasing them with geopolymers so they're now fireproof. So those wildfires aren't gonna, aren't gonna touch them. We've encased uh, arsenic-laced fly ash, so that that's now to, uh, not a pollutant for the, for the groundwater. Uh, we're looking at building oyster domes to restock uh, the Gulf of Mexico, because that stuff will last in salt water for hundreds and hundreds of years, unlike Portland, which will break mm -hmm. down, right? And then we've got a few, a half dozen or dozen bids on housing projects, a couple commercial projects as well, right? So lots of applications, including if you look right there, uh, like looking like ceramic vases, lawn chairs, you name it, like small scale applications as well. Okay. Yeah. Very good. In fact, uh, we think uh, probably one of the, the most promising applications for geopolymers is actually just to fix and extend the lifespan and the strength of, of Portland based structures, right? Because we can spray this on, fill it into cracks, it's reactive, and so it, it fuses. And now you have uh, a, a repaired concrete or a fireproof concrete. You can spray it on wood and it immediately polymerizes. It creates like uh, petrified wood, mm -hmm. only it does so in seconds. And now that wood it has a layer that's totally fireproof. Wow. Right? So there are a lot of like spray applications uh, that we're looking for repair work and for fireproofing as well. Very good. And those will probably take off quicker uh, than large structures, but right. we'll see where we go. Hopefully this, uh, uh, a printing geopolymer will help us to, to sort of drag this into the market and, and get rid of, of, of dirty, the dirty, dirty parts of the industry. Awesome.